Hello everyone and bom dia, good morning. My name is Deborah Paul and I work for IDIG Bio as a digitization and training specialist and focus on community building. I'm very pleased to be part of the 23rd Brazilian Zoology Congress and I wish I could be with you in person. For this talk, I'll start by sharing how the IDIG Bio project came to be. I'll highlight some benefits that come from creating virtual digital collections and share a few community and capacity building models that have evolved. At the end, there are a few key questions to discuss about data use, sustainability, and stakeholders. Efforts and resources needed to create digital virtual collections must be balanced with the need to care for the physical collections. While time, money, and expertise are precious resources, it seems that collections must be more visible to be sustainable. We must find ways to achieve this balance. If we are going to create digital collections that the world's scientists can rely upon, we need expertise for creating, managing, and doing research with these new and growing data resources. Only with investment in human capacity can we build a national and international research infrastructure. So what is IDIGBio and where exactly did IDIGBio come from? IDIGBio is a 10-year effort, currently in year seven, designed to get collections actively digitizing. Our goal is to speed access to collections data for scientists and educators to use and to support reproducible research. At idigbio.org, you will find vouchered specimen data and media for your research. No observations. In addition, we have collaborated worldwide to develop and share digitization best practices. On our website, you will also discover research examples and lessons for your classroom use that use real collections data. All of our materials are free for you to use, and we encourage you to share your materials. We have over 108 million data records and 23 million media records. Check our website too for current events and news and upload your community events. IDIC Bio came from an event where a diverse group of scientists dreamed of a worldwide virtual vouchered specimen collection. They wrote the NEBA plan, Network Integrated Bio Collections Alliance. NEBA stresses it is vital to increase online accessibility of biological collections and collaboratively create a, dynam a dynamic electronic resource. In response, NSF used the NEBA plan to develop and fund a 10-year program advancing the digitization of biocollections, ADBC. Museums form networks around a research theme and seek funding from the ADBC program to digitize collections supporting that research. These are thematic collection networks. TCNs. IDIGBio engages the U.S. and international collections community to facilitate access to all of this data. Currently, in the ADBC network, we have 675 participating collections in 336 institutions. At the time of this talk, there are 20 TCNs and 23 partners to those TCNs. Here are a few images to share some of the breadth of our data and media records. Note, we have records and images and recordings from collections all over the world, not just from US collections. Here are two examples of our thematic collection networks. The Tritrophic TCN digitized the Hemiptera the parasites of the hemiptera and the plants they feed on in order to create a data set to investigate these dynamic host species 
associations. So our mission at IDIG Bio has four parts. We are to engage with the collections community, facilitate digitization and data mobilization in order to aggregate the US and vouchered collections worldwide. We do this in order to facilitate research and outreach. How do we do all of this? Community building. We reach out to museums, to networks, individuals, and many organizations such as the Society for Preservation of Natural History Collections, Spinach, Vertnet, GBIF, and the Entomological Collections Network and others to work together and contribute to best practices to develop tools and transform specimen data. Through activities such as workshops, webinars, working groups, symposia, and publications, we collaborate to enable research use. Workflows, workshop materials, lesson plans, research highlights are all tools at IDIG Bio for everyone to use made possible by NSF funding. Note that GBIF, IDIG Bio, and the Atlas of Living Australia are also working together to provide researchers and data providers with harmonized data quality information. We encourage you to share your collections-based materials for digitization and data use guidance. Why digitize? Digitizing and sharing collections data provides many benefits. Notably, you can make better plans to protect, sustain, and highlight your collections when you know more about what you have. Sharing collections data increases publications using the data and increases visits and curation. This information comes from surveying collections worldwide in the 2016 GBIF Task Force Survey for accelerating the discovery of biocollections data. Aggregating your data is powerful. It offers new opportunities to discover what is unique about your collections. By combining your data with other collections, mapping and modeling improve for everyone. Aggregators offer tools for improving data quality and helping your collection increase its accessibility. If you have not digitized your collections yet, or even if you have, it is important to share your collections metadata as a first step in your efforts to create virtual collections. These are just some of the areas where collections data can and do contribute to scientific research. Can you think of more? Note the particularly useful depth that collections data can bring to questions involving time space and geologic time scales and informing the needs for future collection efforts. In this research, scientists looked at quantifying habitats. For example, when can a given animal be outside or not and survive the climatic conditions? Imagine merging this type of data to specimen occurrences. Doing just that, Barry Sanervo and colleagues are predicting extinctions. Species of reptiles and amphibians have begun going extinct from climate change. They are using IDIG Bio, they, that's Barry Sanervo and colleagues, are using IDIG Bio and VertNet records to predict these events. Their workflow of the future includes proofing the museum records with molecular phylogenies, merging the museum records to ecological variables, biophysical data, and climate data, and then sharing these plots online. More examples of stakeholders include Jenny McGuire, who uses collections in her work as a paleoecologist. They provide her with identification help and the chance to create detailed morphological data to share with the paleo collections. Anna Monfels is a plant systematist, a botanist who vouchers specimens herself. She works with the conservation community. They have a project, the Prairie Fen Research Collaborative. They conduct research that addresses knowledge gaps, hindering the conservation of prairie fen biodiversity. 
they accrue knowledge and create new tools in order to put this data together, specimen data and observation data, to help a variety of agencies and organizations to conserve prairie fens for the benefit of a unique species and people. And here in the graphic, you see that collection and observation data have been merged. Through the Blue Project, Anna Monfels and others are leading the way to help get collections data into the undergraduate classroom. To find out how you can contribute and benefit, you can go to this URL. Collections data use is increasing. These screenshots showcase just a few of the publications using collections data in various kinds of research. Note the South American bivalve research on the lower right, and the article looking at whether or not the Amazonian River postulated to be a border between endemism areas really is or not. The graph on the lower left highlights the increasing number of publications that mention the ADBC, IDIC Bio, and the TCNs. IDIC Bio is proud to be part of supporting the broader community need for training in biodiversity data mobilization and research use. As we go forward and our funding decreases for such activities, where will these skills come from? How do we continue? These are serious questions for all of us to think about and work on together. Think about the components that may be needed for digitization. From the very beginning of the ADBC, my colleague Gil Nelson, myself, and others realized the need for biodiversity informatics managers to coordinate and manage collection digitization efforts. What do you do if you do not have such a person in your institution? Looking for collaboration can help. How many of you have joined us for Darwin Core Hour webinars? Darwin Core Hour is a public forum to capture questions and provide answers and examples for topics related to the use of the Darwin Core standard for sharing biodiversity data. We foster and welcome worldwide participation. Please join our diverse group as we connect the standards development community with collections, research, and developers. Got a Darwin Core question right now? Send it to bit.ly slash DWC hour dash input. Here are just a few models to share with you, and maybe you have some to share with us. The North American Network of Small Herbaria, NANCH, offers small collections a way to share expertise and resources to meet the challenges of mobilizing collections data and encouraging data use. Similarly, the Entomological Collections Network meets just before the Entomological Society of America meeting each year. This synergy makes it easier financially and logistically for more collections staff to get to both meetings and as a result invigorates participation and supports collaboration for digitization and research use in this community. The Latin American Global Biodiversity Information Facility nodes are very active and developing rich resources and looking for collaboration to do more to mobilize collections data in Latin America. The Society for the Preservation of Natural History Collections is looking for more international involvement the Spinach Emerging Professionals Group provides support for undergraduate, graduate, and early career collection staff. Via the Collections Club model started by Carrie Harris and others at Arkansas State University, small university collections across the USA benefit from fundraisers and digitization, all done by students. The students benefit from active participation in the Spinach Professional Organization and from trips to visit other collections. Data and software carpentry, now the Carpentries, provide a cohesive model for spreading foundational biodiversity data skills and building a community that can design, develop, maintain, and assess their own efforts. This is a worldwide group. Anyone can participate. You could take a workshop, host a workshop, become an instructor, help develop materials, or perhaps start a carpentries community at your institution. 
someone asked me how we might encourage more collections data use. One way might be to create and advertise strategic data sets focused on a particular research topic and ready to use. Another idea would be to expand on the notion of a data help desk at conferences and perhaps online. Experts would provide guidance on such topics as where to find data, where to publish data, where to get the skills and expertise needed to use or reuse data. Also, find out where your stakeholders look for data and make sure your data is there. Another issue vital to sustainability of physical and virtual collections is the need to expand our user base and applications for our data. Recent talks by Rui Figuera and Dagan Drayson highlight potential in the vine wine industry as well as with agriculture in general. Another area where our data could be used is ecotourism. Imagine getting off the cruise ship to visit the collection and then visit the collecting localities on an ecotour. Image analysis and gap analysis are two areas filled with potential and many are just beginning to work in these areas. In our efforts to mobilize collections data, we need to ensure that our collections receive attribution and our researchers, taxonomists and systematists, get recognized for their expertise. Is your collection listed at grbio.org? The more metadata you include there about experts in your collection and your holdings, the greater chance for someone to discover your specimens and your experts. This can be the doorway to finding funding and collaborators. Please provide rich metadata and encourage your research community to follow the citation recommendations provided by data aggregators and collections. Many in the biodiversity data community, including publishers, hope to simplify and automate the citation attribution process. We need these statistics to support our existence. Collaboration is key. A few people to thank here, as this talk is certainly a collaborative effort. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you find some ideas in this talk and some insights to guide future collaborative efforts to mobilize collections data and research use. Please get in touch.